With action and suspense, out of the Old West comes the most famous hero of them all, Hopalong Cassidy, starring William Boyd. The Ring of the Silver Spurs heralds the most amazing man ever to ride the prairies of the early West, Hopalong Cassidy. This famous hero thrills his 60 million fans with action and dangerous adventure. In the role of Hopalong Cassidy is the popular star of the motion picture series, William Boyd. And now, another exciting story of the early West. Melody of Murder. <laughs> sun slips over the ragged peaks of the distant range, a stagecoach rolls along the dusty narrow road bound for Pleasantdale. Looking very pale from the constant rocking is California Carlson. Hopalong Cassidy at his side is pretending not to notice his pal's plight. The other passenger, a Chinese gentleman and evidently a scholar, dozes peacefully in his seat. Doggone it, Hoppy. Riding this stage is worse than trying to ride a steer. Ha, ha, ha. Getting seasick, California? Well, no, but I'm kind of losing interest in the scenery. Well, next time we take this trip, Popper will be in shape and we'll ride in style. Yeah. Wonder who our oriental friend is. Why? Well, he ain't said a word. Looks like he's kind of scared that every minute's going to be the next. Your profound interest in me is very flattering, my friend. Mm -hmm. uh, I didn't know you heard me. No offense, Matt Mister. Being the sole occupants of this conveyance, perhaps we should know each other better. My name is Wong Ling. Well, Mr. Wong, my name is Cassidy. Hop along, Cassidy, and this is California Carlson. Oh, you are cattle men? Well, yes, but our spread's a hundred miles from here. The bar 20. Say, aren't we going a little too fast? Yeah, I noticed it myself. Uh, and look, hairpin turn just ahead. Better call to the driver. Perhaps the driver fell asleep. Driver. Hey, driver. Uh, he don't answer. Hang on, it's too late. We are running low on. Oh, 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 oh. oh. Ah, uh, California. You all right? Wait till I feel my ribs. Feels like I've been dragged through cactus. Yeah. Look, our Oriental friend is out. You think he's dead? Wait a minute. No, he's, he's breathing. Get him out. Kick that door open. Take his legs. We'll lay him on the ground. Uh. Easy now, California. Easy now. He's sure heavy for so small a man. Ah, uh, there. Get that canteen there. I'll open his shirt. Yeah. Here. Maybe a drink or... What's wrong, Hoppy? This little silk bag around his neck. Uh, bag? Look. Thousand dollar bills. Well, I never did see one of them up close. I'll tie it up. I uh, bet this darn driver had something to do with this. I'll give him... California, save your breath. We don't have a driver. Those horses were running away. No driver? And look at the stagecoach. I wonder how it happened. Well, it wasn't an accident, California. Look at these wheel spokes. Broke clear through like matchsticks. Not broken through, sawed through. And I aim to find out why. Now back to Hopalong Cassidy and our story, Melody of Murder. Hoppy and his pal, California, were taking the stage to Pleasantdale when the stage turned over, going around Hairpin Bend. They discovered the driver was missing, and while caring for an injured Oriental passenger, found ten $1,000 bills wadded up in a silk bag around his neck. Upon inspecting the stage closer, Hoppy learned that several spokes in the stage wheel had been sawed through. It is two hours later in a hotel room in Pleasantdale. Who is it? Pete, hey, let me in. Come on, get in, Trick. Where's the cash? I didn't get it. I said, where's the cash? 
So help me, Red. Something happened. <laughs> Let me tell you. You slipped up your buzzard bait. That was Cassidy's fault. Who's Cassidy? Hop along, Cassidy. You mean he saw you? No. I slugged the driver like you told me before they come to hairpin turn and the horses run away and the sod spokes let go, but I, I couldn't get to the money because Cassidy was with him. I stayed hidden in the rocks and I rode in the back way. I stand to lose my spread, my beef, the whole setup, because you botched the job. By I order... Oh, now, wait, it ain't too late, Red. The Oriental's got a room here in the hotel. I've got to get that money. And don't forget my cut. This guy's relative, what runs the laundry, knows this fellow's going to buy a ranch. Oh, selling him yours? Yeah, you'll think so. But after he pays over the dough, he won't have no need for a ranch. Mm-hmm. What about me? Well, Pete, I'll tell you. After the way you botched up saw them spokes... Oh, yeah, I see. We're through, huh? Yeah, that's right. Well, that don't make me mad. Because I got a better way of getting the dough without selling a phony ranch. <laughs> I tell you, Sheriff, them spokes were sawed through slick as butter. Somebody tried to kill us. Yeah, sure looks like it. They picked up Woody Watson, the driver, this morning. Not on his head. Did someone jump him from behind? Woody says he don't remember a thing. Well, somebody must have been after the Oriental's money. Oriental's money? Thousands of dollars. We saw it. Anybody else know about it? No one else on the stage but us. I wonder why he was packing so much with him. Yeah, I wonder. Hmm. Got any ideas, Sheriff? Well, I don't know. Last year, a fellow came to town with a big bankroll. We found him out by the flats two months later. Money was gone. He'd been dead a week. Did you find the killer? Well, not exactly. I got suspicions, but no proof. The bartender heard him say he was in town to buy Red Sheva's ranch. Hey, maybe this here could be another of them deals. What makes you say that, Sheriff? Well, the same chief is in town again. I understand he's here in business. Selling another ranch? Could be. Well, won't take long to find out. He's bunking up at the hotel. Well, that's where Wong Lee is staying. Might be interesting at that, Sheriff. Let's go. I'll join you in the dining room right soon. I got a couple of little things to kind of clean up first. We'll take a look around over at the hotel. Maybe meet this rancher. Uh, what'd you say his name is? Red Sheevers. Yeah, I'd like to meet the gent. Yeah, good idea. He might uh, interest us in buying his ranch. Well, you gentlemen can sit right here at this table. Uh, I'd sure like to sit at that there one. Shows I could look out in the street. Well, I'm sorry, sir, but that table's reserved. Mr. Cheevers would be awful mad. Uh, Red Cheevers? Yes, sir. Uh, this table's good enough, California. Well, it ain't my fault, mister. I just work here. Uh, and nobody got... said it was. Where's that paper with the vittles on it? You mean the menu? That's right. Well, I'll get you one, but I could tell you what we have just as easy. <laughs> Doggone, Hoppy, this dining room is sure fitted out in style. Yeah, music and everything. That fella plays pretty good. Hey, where's the darn piano? Find those potted plants. Yeah, music ain't gonna take the place of food. Where's that darn gale gone? Come on here, let's have some grub. California, I'm ashamed of you. Are you calling me, friend? <laughs> Is there something I can do for you? Uh, no, my friend here doesn't like to wait for his food. Well, I don't blame him. The service here is brutal. You sure wish he'd come back. Well, I'll take your order, but hurry up. Because if the boss don't hear that piano going every minute, he thinks he's getting cheated. The piano sounds mighty good. First class shape, too. Oh, you play a piano? <laughs> Me? Not anymore. He, he used to could, though, when he was a little button. Well, it's, it's all in keeping him in shape, you know. <laughs> I repair it, and I tune it myself, and it's always first class. How about some ham and eggs, California? He suits me just fine. And there's only one more thing. Yeah? Get them here pronto. Yeah, well, I'll have the girl bring them. i got to get right back and get to work. California, look who's coming in. Mm, Wong Ling feller with a red-headed cowboy. Red Cheevers, or my name isn't Cassidy. I'd like to know what's going on. Let's uh, walk over to the bar. Yeah. How's this? Perfect. 
Turn your back a bit. I reserve this table, Mr. Wong. You are a very considerate person, Mr. Cheever. I ain't much for talking. <clears throat> I'm right straight out and fair, dealing across the board. <clears throat> The price is 10000 for water rights, grazing, and 200 heads. Oh, that lion stealing. Your Calibre. description is excellent. But as I told you in my letter, I must see before I buy. Well, you see, I'm making it low because I want to clean everything up today so as I can see a sick sister in Denver. You have the title for Wong Ling to see? The title? Oh, well, I can get that quick, but uh, maybe you ain't got 10000 though. He's going to have it long. Wong Ling, keep his word. Proof is in the seeing. Here, in this little silk bag. Ten thousand and that? I do not make idle talk, my friend. Observe. Thousand dollar bills. Hmm? Hey, gents, the gal is still busy back there, so... Hey, is that real dough? Get out of here, you saddle bomb. Well, I wouldn't have believed it if I hadn't seen it. So you see, the money is here. But I must be sure. Uh, yes, well, um... I'll go get the boundary maps, the water rights, and the title and the stuff, and I'll meet you in your room in five minutes. Very well. I shall be willing to consider them. Guess we can go back and eat now, California. Mr. Wong is a very clever businessman. Well, that uh, grub was mighty good, Hoppy. You could have used a few more eggs in it, though. Listen. That was one of the first pieces I played when I took the other lesson. <laughs> oh, when you was just a little button, eh? Yeah, that was a lot of years ago. It certainly brings back my boyhood days. The early days on the old bar 20. Yep. Yeah. yeah, we should be getting back to the bar 20 with these harnesses. The stage leaves tonight. Yeah, looks like we wasted half an hour eating in here, California. Uh, sure, I'll be glad to get outside where I can hear something besides that piano playing. Why, he ain't let up for 20 minutes. He's probably tired of it, too. Sounds like it. Poppy, hear that? Someone's screaming. Sounded like in the hotel. You're right, California. Come on. Uh, there goes the clerk up the stairs. And that's where we're going, too. The sheriff's just coming in the front door. Come on, Hoppy. Something's wrong. Be right with you, Sheriff. Up these stairs. Right behind you, Sheriff. Oh, he's in there. He's harmed. He's dead. I rapped on the door and nobody answered. All right, all right, lady. Get to one side. What's wrong? He went in his room just five minutes ago. All right, lady, all right, all right. We'll talk to you in a minute. Now close the door. Well, he's gone for sure, sir. Whoever did it didn't waste time getting what they wanted. His little silk money bag is also gone. Now back to Hopalong Cassidy and our story, Melody of Murder. A Chinese gentleman by the name of Wong Ling was injured slightly when the stagecoach in which he was riding with Hoppy in California was wrecked. While Hoppy was aiding Mr. Wong, he discovered a small self bag containing several $1,000 bills. Wong Ling met a character by the name of Cheevers in the hotel dining room to discuss buying a ranch and made an appointment with Cheevers for five minutes later. An appointment with death. All right, just, just go on, Mrs. Davis. Yeah. Well, I brought some blankets about five minutes after the gentleman went in his room. And when he didn't answer the door, in I went. Uh-huh, and saw Wong Ling lying here, huh? Hmm? That hit wound, Hoppy, looked to you like a gunshot? I don't think so, Sheriff. The size is right, but no one heard a shot. Looks like we got to find a weapon made out of metal with a small hole in it. Could anyone have gone down the back stairs? Oh, I just seen him, sir. Uh-huh. Well, Hoppy, looks like we start from scratch. The fellow could be 20 miles from here by now. Or he could still be right here in the hotel. We can find out by checking with the clerk. I'd say the killer knows his way around this hotel mighty well. <laughs> Oh, 
Well, we ain't found a thing yet, Hoppy. And this is the last room. Yeah. Hmm. Uh, nope. Nobody in here. I never saw such an empty hotel before. Wait. Somebody's out in the sun without his hat. Or he's around somewhere. Yeah, I see it. I see it. Lying on that washstand there. Cover me, Sheriff, till I see what's in this clothes closet. Mm -hmm. Lose something, mister? Well, come on. I not kill him. I hide him really quick. Oh, don't you, don't you, Lord Benjamin. What are you doing in here? Whose room is this? I not know. I hear ladies scream. Lee Ling, hide quick in the room. This your hat? I not wear a hat. That belong to man. What man? I not see. I run in room as fast. Something hit Lee Ling on the head. Oh, belly by the bump. See? Yeah, you got a pretty good clout there. You sure you didn't get the clout in Wong's room when you were taking the money? No, no. I not steal. Wong, my nephew. He very good man. This hat, Sheriff, belongs to a fellow with a pretty big head. Got some initials in the band. Oh, is that so? Uh, can you make them out? Just faintly, J. C. J. C. It'd be just like I thought. You know you know Mikey Lee Ling go to jail? No. Tong, you get to go. Oh, now, wait a minute. Arguing ain't going to do you any good. Looks mighty bad for you hiding this way, Ling. And I ain't so sure you're telling the truth. Oh, yes. I not tell you lie. Lee Ling, your nephew had $10,000 not over half an hour ago. I know. I call on his nephew. We have a talk. He say, I'm a very really good man. Look, he give me $1,000 for my birthday. Golly, it sure is. A, a thousand dollar bill. Where the rest of them, Ling? No, no. I got no more. He tell me go on. He talk with man about the buy ranch. He make a bargain. He laugh. He say man think him fool. You left, and uh, what were you doing till you heard the scream? I standing on the stair and listen to pretty piano music in the dining room go, dong, 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 dong. For that, oh my goodness. I, I'm taking you in, Lily. No, no. I have to tell you all the truth. No, don't really You're taking him in, Sheriff? Yep. Then we'll go to the recorder's office and locate a ranch. Ranch? Uh mm huh. -hmm. And when we locate the ranch, we'll maybe find a head to fit this hat. Come on, Lily. <laughs> You can put up that six gun. I ain't to, as soon as I'm sure. How long you been here? I lit out when I heard that gal scream. You know, I thought you was dumb when you botched that stage crash, but I gotta hand it to you. Me? Yeah, a good clean job. And you're in the clear. Me? Yeah. I watched in the blacksmith shop. Saw him taking the Chinese laundry man to jail. <laughs> Looks like we're in the clear. I don't get you, Sheevers. I'm only here to see that I get my share of that money. Well, I'm willing. You sure deserve a half of it. Well, doggone, Sheevers. You fooled me. I was aiming to take it out of your hide. Oh, I'm a square fella, Pete. Come on, get it out, and we'll take our cut and hit the trail. Get what out? By the money you took off of that Chinese fella. Me? Why, I thought you had it. Why, you double cross <laughs> Yellow double cross. Where's he got the money? I gotta find it. And hit the trail. I'm facing a hang noose now. <laughs> nose on your face, Hopalong. This Cheevers and Lee Ling's in together. And yeah, maybe you're right, Sheriff. That doggone little bump on Ling's head weren't more than half. Why should Ling Lee take only one bill? 
The way I see it, he, he took them all. And Cheevers only give him one of them for his share. Why should he give Cheevers any? Well, he, he could have... Uh, oh, doggone it, Hoppy. Why you always bring up something to spoil my reasoning? <laughs> I don't aim to, Sheriff. I'm as mixed up as you are. Uh, we'll soon know. Just over this ride, you can see the cabin. And we better be mighty careful, too. Smoking this redhead out is a man's job. <laughs> well, sir, I'm just the man that can do it, too. So be careful with that six gun. I want this hombre alive. Get down. He's trying to shoot his way out. Yep. He's heading for that horse over yonder by the cottonwoods. I gotta wing him before he gets to that horse. He stumbled, Hoppy. That's good shooting. He's quitting. He's got one arm up. Come on. Don't try any tricks, Cheevers. All right, I ain't hanging for that, gentlemen. I'll take that six gun, Cheevers. Pete done it, Sheriff. Pete? Who's Pete? He's in the house. I tried to bring him in, but he, he fought me. I, I think he's done for. Uh, he's better off than you are, Cheevers. I didn't kill Wong. Somebody did. Somebody who knew he had the money. And someone who knew where his room was. That's right, Happy. Uh, I'm getting this Lee Ling fella and Cheevers together. And one of them is going to be buzzard bait. I'll have a bite of grub with you, Hoppy. Then I'm going to take that laundry apart until I find that little silk bag of money. You're pretty sure you got the right man, Sheriff. Sure am. Cheevers will swing for doing away with that fella in the cabin, anyhow. Doggone it, a feller gets the worst service in this dining room. Hey, how about some grub? Yeah, I'm sure much obliged for your help, Hoppy. Hi, the late gents. Uh, we're just about to close up, and I don't know where the waitress is. And... Oh, but we're plum starved. Well, I, I guess we could give you a little something. What'll it be? Uh, eggs so high with a slab of bacon on top. That's good enough for me. Sheriff? No, nope, no, no, I ain't eaten yet. I'm going to have a little talk with the desk clerk. Maybe he knows what time this Lee fellow went upstairs. Oh, uh, Eddie, how about a little music with the bacon and eggs? Well, it's uh, kind of late. Ah, uh, just one more tune. It's, uh, it's relaxing. Well, I... Well, I guess I could. You must like music. I do. You know, Eddie, I took piano lessons when I was a kid. Lessons? <laughs> You're different than me. I never learned a note in my life. You know, music just comes natural like. Uh, well, hurry up with that grub, will you? Yeah, I'll be ready in a minute. Plenty of it, Jen. Hey, you know, Hoppy, that Lee feller never said where he was after he left the old man's room. You just don't remember said he was standing on the stairs listening to the piano music. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I remember now. Hmm. I wonder. Yeah. Think he was lying? Huh? Oh, excuse me, California. You, you know, Hoppy, I'm sorry for one thing. Uh, I never got to meet that coyote who saw them spooks on the stage. I, I, I say, I, I never got to meet... Uh, you ain't listening. I'm listening, but not to you. Hmm? Go get the sheriff, California. I think we can hand him his killer. Now back to Hop Along Cassidy. Hey, what's this California says about the killer? You know darn well I already got him. I think I'm right, Sheriff. Come on. Eddie. Huh? Give the sheriff the money. Money? What money? That little silk bag of money you took from Wong when you killed him. Well, I didn't kill nobody. I... I was playing the piano when he was killed. I got, got proof. Happy, I don't I'll see how he... Take off the front of the piano, Sheriff. No, no, leave it alone. Don't. Huh? Leave it alone. I don't think you'll find it there. hidden behind no, a couple of strings on the sounding board, Sheriff. Yeah, okay. I, I don't like nobody messing around with my piano. Go on. I ain't done nothing. I'm this sorry. is just a hunch, Eddie. Hey, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. There is something here. No, Happy. that's just the piano. It's, just, it's, it's tied to the string. No. Now, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Yes. Yes, here we are. Well, I didn't that, see that. That little bag. Well, I'll be horn swoggled. Well, where did that Matter, come from? something wrong with the piano? Yes, young lady. We're just finding out what made a bum note. Bum well, note? Why, 
it was all right this afternoon when I was practicing. But she wasn't even around. Then you were the one who played that little exercise. Sure. Eddie lets me practice now and then. I'm learning notes out of a book. Well, you sniveling little... Come on, on, Eddie. Come on. Save your breath. You'll need it for climbing some steps to a hangman. That blasted girl opening her yap. Well, what's the matter with him? Oh, nothing much. He's just going to jail for murder. Oh, I see. He just... What? Don't take time to figure that out, girlie. Just go get our ham and eggs. Well, all right, all right. You cowpokes are all crazy. <laughs> Uppy, how did you know it wasn't Eddie playing the piano during the killing? Eddie himself told me when he said he never took a lesson. The music we heard during the murder was an exercise. So it was the gal practicing, eh? But how did you know to take the front off the piano? Because Eddie took pride in his piano. And I knew it wasn't neglect that caused that bum note. It was the hidden money bag. Well, I'll be darned. Eddie's music was his alibi and his giveaway. That's right, California. One rotten apple spoils a barrel. And one bum note spoiled a murderer's scheme. <laughs> Goodbye from Hopalong Cassidy. Hoppy and California are hitting the trail homeward again, and after this little adventure, the Bar 20 is going to be a restful sight. Hope you enjoyed this friendly visit, and that you'll remember to tune in next time these two fighting cowboys get involved in another thrilling escapade. Hopalong Cassidy, starring William Boyd, is transcribed and produced in the West by Walter White, Jr. Melody of Murder was written by Howard Swart. All stories are based upon the characters created by Clarence E. Mulford. This is a Commodore production.